Alright, so, <clears throat> any comments on the videos? Questions? Which was your favorite one? So, the forging? The, the bottles and the tubs, how they suck that oh, shit the out. the tub, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Vacuum forming, that's I've been doing carpentry for, for 20 years. I never knew how they made a tub. Yeah, that vacuum forming is real good. Remember back the first week, we saw the, the bicycle helmets done the same way. Yeah. Um, it's really easy to get a, you know, have a complex shape and just have the flat plastic kind of fall onto it. Um, so what are some advantages of pot forming? Quick detail. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Yeah. You can hit it hard and fast, and it, it bends pretty easy when it's hot. What else? Solid. It makes it hard, hard to break. No waste. Yeah, there's not. Yeah, you, you have less waste. Less or no waste. What else? More complex designs. Yeah, you can get more complex designs than you can with like casting, right? material itself. If you look at there's like we wanted to have a piece of material like that, right? <clears throat> if we cast it, how are the grains of material gonna be in there? There's gonna be kind of random, right? Mm -hmm. There's kind of random things in there. When we cast or when we hot forge it, or when we form it, it's all going to kind of, they're going to bend into form around that, right? <clears throat> so now that we've got continuous grains going through. So that's the strength to it. If we machined it, the grains would go straight across with the meat cut, right? So that, so by, by, by forming it, you're continuous. So what about... We haven't talked about cold yet, but what do you think of the advantage of hot forming over cold forming would be? We kind of talked about this a couple weeks ago. Quicker. Yeah, it's quicker. Do you have to use much, as much pressure? No. No? So, your machines can be a little lighter, but what else do you have to watch out for? So, like if you're doing forging, or working with hot, hot metals. Over exertion on the piece? Or like well, think about the machine. It's like the machine. Let's think about the machine. What? Maybe less wear, but also maybe more wear, right? Because the heat of the metal. So you'd have to have your dies able to handle the heat of that metal. Um, so you have to have special special dies, cooling included, uh, so that your your dies don't break down or your machines don't wear out. Because um, the machines themselves can be smaller than if we're doing cold. What else? Well, it's about the, the the actual material itself that's being used. Some of it's already recycled. It's half, raw, half recycled. Well, yeah, that's getting into the process. But once it's already here, let's think about hot versus cold forming right now. So it would be a benefit of hot. Versus cold. You get your finished product faster. Can you get it to the exact size with hot forming? Yeah. With real close tolerances? Yeah. No, right? Because what happens when it cools down? It's going to change. What happens when a material is hot? It expands. It expands. But what else happens to it when it's hot? It can warp and. What happens when. You heat material up. No, I'm not sure. I think it was something else. 
I'm, I'm not going there. <laughs> that, that's part of it. Um, but we'll get to that one. When you're welding, what are you trying to do? Use. No, besides, besides, besides the actual welding part, what else are you trying to do? You're trying to put two pieces together. Why are there all different types of welding? What's the difference between them? Different materials. No. That's not where I'm going. I'm going. To, so why do you why do you have flux when you weld, or why do you have a gas when you weld? To shield. To shield it, right? Because what are you trying to do? Keep oxygen away. Keep oxygen away. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you have the whole piece that's real hot, what's happening? The whole thing is getting oxidized. So you've got that the layer on the outside. You also lose carbon and steel from the outside layers. So the outside layers are now not as strong as the inside layers. How could you fix that? Yeah, you can machine it off the outside afterwards. What else? Yeah, we could cold form it. Now we don't have that problem. If we wanted to heat pot form it, but then we, how can we, can we add that carbon back to the outside? Can we? Did we talk about that a couple weeks ago? Hint, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. What? No? Now it, now it gives some strength, but that wouldn't add the carbon back. How can we add carbon back to the outside of it? Give you a hint, it starts with a C. hardening. So you heat it up, you dip it in oil something with a lot of carbon in it so the carbon can seep back in. <coughs> um, what else? Um, so then get back to what Josh was saying about So when we heat treat it, what are we doing? Like we're strengthening. We're strengthening it and we're changing the structures of the material, right? So if you form it while it's at those same temperatures, your crystals are going to be the same size everywhere. Right? When you cold roll, cold form it, what happens? Yeah, you smash and you stretch so, so they're not the same size anymore. So in hot forming, you don't Work hard in the material either, because now it's soft. You're not working, you're not smashing it, making it work hard. Um, so those are some of the advantages. So some of the disadvantages was the oxidation. Oxidation. Um, Not as close tolerances. Any, any other disadvantages? What? Yeah, the, the heat on the tooling. Anything else? Yeah, you have to you have time for it to cool. Any other, any other disadvantages? It takes more steps to actually get your product. Yep, more steps. Anything else? Yeah, that's pretty good. So in metals, we had forging, right? So we have, so what is forging? Basically, pressing. yeah, pressing or hammering it. What is there a difference between pressing and hammering it? Yeah. What What's the difference? Yeah, 
yeah, pressing is kind of uniform and you just do the whole thing. Hammering, it's fast. And what happens when you hammer on something? Does the whole thing bend at the same time? Just like where you're hitting it, right? That bends the most and the other side doesn't bend as much. <clears throat> um, and so there's also roll forging. We, we have rollers that have a shape. So you can kind of put the metal in and it rolls back out and forms it. Uh, that that'd be more roll forming here, not roll forging would be like um, in your book. shape goes into some rollers that, that make it separate pieces. And then rolling, what is rolling here? So kind of like Josh said, like a bike spender, where it'll, you can actually roll full, full sheets to turn them into a full cylinder. For like pipes? Yeah, for pipes. You can also do linear rolling, where it kind of starts out and kind of bends it up. Um, as it's going down, so it might start with something that's flat, or and then you kind of shape it to where here it's kind of like that, and then eventually like that, something like that. It kind of eventually gets to the final product, kind of in steps. So it either bends it or, or actually forces it to, to, to change. No, that's rolling. And then what's extrusion? Yeah, push or pull through a mold. So Play-Doh, remember that, you guys ever play the Play-Doh thing when you're kids? Put it in, you hit the button and it comes out like a nice long noodle. That's extrusion. Yeah, yeah you can do that. With it. Like this. So, why do we do extrusions? What's their benefit? You get detailed pieces in nice quantities. Yeah, you get really detailed parts that either are going to be long pieces. So, like this. So how is that extruded from? It's pushed through the die. Pushed through like that. Really? So, a yeah. solid billet piece or something? Yep. Yeah. Like, it, it's kind of a melted. It's, it's, it's not quite liquid, but it's. Like not one. solid, and they'll have the die will be like I don't know an inch thick, and it'll have this profile cut into it. So wherever the material here in the die, that'd be an opening, and then they just heat the metal up, and push it through, and then you get a nice long piece like this. And then they can cut it. If you want finished pieces that are thin, you just cut it thin. If you want pieces that are long, you give it long. So, like this, you couldn't machine this, right? Sure you can. Really? Put that hole down the middle? Probably. It'd, It'd probably take forever. It, really? You'd have a you have a end mill that's a foot and a half long? <laughs> they make pretty long drill bits. No. Not that long. I think it is long enough to put on here. <clears throat> uh, like stages. Lighting things, they all use types of pictures. And we got a couple of them over there too. Like here's, here's another one. So you can get real complex shapes uh, and then have it extruded. With, they can be hollow. So, how do they make it hollow? Push around that. Yeah, the, but if they've got. So if the die is like this, and I don't know, that's my shape that I have cut out. How do they keep that middle of the die there? Is there a cone where the, or the uh, something that splits the 
test that one in. Yeah, it's, so if you look at the side, there's the main die. And if there's a complete hollow, it's called a mandrel that they'll have either attached somehow, that will maybe come like that, and then it'll fill in. Like that, so that the material can flow around it, and then the, this mandrel sticks into there. So the material can get around it on the back side, and but when it comes out the front, it just has the cross section. Okay. Um, so Susan uses a lot of metals, use a lot of plastics too. Changed the wrong one. This is supposed to be the plastic slide. So we have extrusion with plastic, we have thermoforming. Um, what else could we use thermoforming for? So we talked about bathtubs, we talked about bike helmets. What else? Laminates. What? Laminates? Casings no, for stuff? What about casings? Yeah, casings. So Packaging. Packaging. For like blister packs. You know, you, you have like, the two sides of the. What about like cardboard. mannequins and stuff like Those, that? Those that's thermoform. What? Mannequins. Mannequins. Those hollow plastic. Maybe. Well, uh, some of those are um, slush molded. You know, they fill it up, they pour out the extra. Oh yeah. Um, they could be, and at least the outside of them could be thermoform. Um, Food packaging all the time, thermoformed, um, and all the disposable snack containers and things like pudding cups and, and all that, those are all thermoformed. So big in the food industry. And then blow molding was for what? Bottles. Bottles. So what did you start out with in blow molding? Plastic. Yeah, but I mean, but the next, so you. Blow molding used extrusion, right? Or injection molding, right? They injection molded that piece and then did the blow mold from it. They actually have machines that'll do the injection mold and the blow mold all at once. They'll inject it, make that, that thing. What was that thing called? What? The preform? Yeah, the preform. Uh, they're also called the say it wrong if I don't look it up. Parison. So they make the parison or the preform first and then it, and then it'll it injects it and then it blows it right away. <coughs> so um so there's a lot of things where you make something first and then go from it, right? So preform, they call it a lot of the videos. Costles call them blanks. So like if you're casting something, you're casting the rough size, you call that a blank. Or you forge something that's rough, it's called a blank that you're going to do extra machining on later. <clears throat> then with ceramics, we have the drawing. We saw it with the wire, or with the fiber optics. Can you do a drawing cold? Maybe not with glass? With what? Cold. Can you use it with another material? Where you just click, click and hold on and pull, so pull on something to make it thin? Taffy. Yeah, taffy. Copper? Copper? Yeah, that's how they, how they, make, how they make wire. As a coal draw metal um, to make wire. But then we have low molding here also. So, any other comments on hot molding or hot forming? So, 
So when you do, like when I was doing sheet metal, we always had a lot of stock of hot roll sheet and cold roll sheet. So looking at the difference between hot forming and cold forming, let us pick which one we wanted to use for a product. Hot form material would usually bend a little bit easier, but then it's not as strong as the cold rolled stuff. So it kind of depends on what, what the function was, if we want to start out with hot, hot, hot or cold, and then depending on if you're going to heat treat it afterwards also, then we can decide. Questions?